Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out Tower Bridge could have looked very different. Last time we talked about London Bridge, but this time let's talk about Tower Bridge. It's a Jay Foreman video. He's a brilliant genius, y'all. Very creative. And I do have to say I have a personal history with Tower Bridge. I was in London and I was staying in a little town outside of London called Egham at the University of London, a dorm there. We had to take the train back to Egham and... I remember running across the tower bridge to get to the train station because the trains were stopping soon with the fear that I might be stuck on the streets of London overnight. In the 19th century, London became the biggest city on the planet. Its population skyrocketed from 1 million in 1800 to 5 million in 1890. To accommodate the growth on both sides of the River Thames, the number of bridges shot up too, from 3 to 14. So wow. far, all of these bridges were appearing to the west of London Bridge. Crossings were badly needed to the east as well, but none had been built. Why was this? Victorian London was the biggest and most important shipping port in the world. This part of the Thames was known as the Pool of London, packed with docks and warehouses, welcoming boats of all different shapes and sizes from all over the empire to supply Britain with quite literally everything from coal to sugar to dog kennels to mattress protectors to fortune cookies. Any bridge built east of London Bridge would have to somehow keep access open to the Pool of London for the thousands of very, very tall ships. As the famous saying goes, when you can't build a bridge, build a tunnel, stupid. But in the 19th century, this wasn't so easy. Okay, so at the time there were no bridges east of the London Bridge because if you did build a bridge, you had to build it in a way where those large ships could get by, which is probably expensive. No one had ever managed to dig a tunnel under a river anywhere in the world before. But if anyone mm. was up to the job, it was the terrific Richard Trevithick. Mining expert, inventor of the steam train, <laughs> and a tunneling superstar in his native Cornwall. He invented the steam In 1807, Trevithick Hang on. was up to the job. It was the terrific Richard Trevithick. Mining expert, inventor of the steam train. Inventor of the steam train? Richard Trevithick. Never heard of him. British inventor and mining engineer. He was an early pioneer of steam-powered road and rail transport. His most significant contributions were the development of the first high-pressure steam engine and the first working railway steam locomotive. He is an impressive man. So he has a, he has a, uh, what you call it on his head. Okay. Yeah. Tunneling superstar in his native Cornwall. In 1807, Trevithick <laughs> made a good start on a test tunnel in Rotherhithe. But he learnt the hard way that London wasn't Cornwall. London sits on top of a layer of soft, squishy clay that gets extremely sloppy when wet. Under the river, the clay gets extremely sloppy and extremely squishy indeed. Trevithick had only got halfway across the river when the whole thing flooded and collapsed, and the project had to be abandoned. Experts all agreed that digging a tunnel under the Thames was impracticable. But the problem would eventually be solved by a half-English, half-French inventor called Marc Isambard Brunel. Not Isambard Kingdom Brunel, his father. Mark Isambard Brunel didn't know the meaning of impracticable, and neither do I. Brunel had just invented an invention called Brunel's Tunneling Shield, a massive tunnel-sized frame that protected miners while they built brick walls around them. Wait a minute, why is this guy half French guy with gar garlic around his neck? I have to look this up. But the problem would eventually be solved by a half-English, half-French inventor called... Okay, he's half English, half French. That's why he's Mark dressed Isambard like that. Brunel, not Isambard Kingdom Brunel, his father. Mark Isambard Brunel didn't know the meaning of impracticable, and neither do I. Brunel had just invented an invention <laughs> called Brunel's Tunneling Shield, a massive tunnel-sized frame that protected miners while they built brick walls around them, perfect for solving London's sloppy problem. Yeah. Brunel's Tunneling Shield made the job possible, but it didn't make it easy. The project was beset with problems from day one to day six, but it didn't make it easy. Angry letter from the bank. It was beset with problems from day one to day 6,512, with constant delays, floods, and dead miners, very nearly including his son, Isambard. In He's 1843, Brunel's Thames Tunnel was finally opened to the public. But it wasn't what Brunel, or anyone, had had in mind. It was decades late and decades over budget, and it wasn't even suitable to use. With no money left for the massive ramps required for road access, they had to make do with spiral staircases at both ends. Its only possible use was as a very pedestrian tourist attraction, which tourists got very tired of very quickly. So he's standing on the street advertising a tunnel, trying to get people to use the tunnel. It became known in the newspapers as the Great Boar. Oh, I get it. That's funny. Yeah. Brunel's tunnel <laughs> did eventually get turned into... It, well, he timed his reaction and it happened to line up exactly with mine. That's, that's funny. 
Jay Foreman's a brilliant genius, y'all. Oh, I get it. Brunel's tunnel did eventually get turned into something useful. In 1865, the East London Railway bought it and started running their trains under it. You can still visit Smart. today on the underground section of the overground. So you can experience the underground tunnel on the underground section of the overground. So with Brunel's tunnel full of trains, not traffic, it was time for Thames Tunnel, take two. In 1869, <laughs> the Tower Subway was built. And while this one was completed much faster, 14 weeks rather than 20 years, it too was a failure. This oh. isn't it, by the way. The nightmarishly oh. <laughs> claustrophobic Tower Subway was open for just 28 years before closing to the public in 1898. It's still there no today, but you're allowed. only allowed to use it if you're a utility pipe. Uh. <laughs> tunnels, in a nutshell, were not up to the job, and neither were tunnels under the Thames. So just how could the city corporation solve the unsolvable problem of getting traffic across the Pool of London? Get the public to solve it. The city corporation's chief architect, Sir Horace Jones, was put in charge of setting up a competition, calling for ideas for a crossing that was open to both road Twitter. and river traffic. Okay. More than 50 of Britain's <laughs> best engineers submitted ideas, but Horace found something wrong with all of them. He's using Gmail. Let's see, you got an email from Truefax. It says, every single one of these names is a real 19th century British architect. William Errol, bridge, some sort of system of weights and pulleys. Sir Joseph Bazalget, winning bridge design, you're welcome. Eugenius Birch, Tim's bridge, bridge made of marmite. Ignatius Bonomi, pick my bridge. Lewis Hornblower, bridge competition. Do we have to bring our own cards? Oh, like they're playing bridge. Okay. Joseph Gray Torex, just drained the Thames. <laughs> Mark Brunel, just realized I died in 1849. Mark Brunel, have you considered a tunnel? Bannister Fletcher, senior, trampolines on both sides. That would be fun. Lewis Hornblower, London Bridge, not that London Bridge. Ernest Coxhead, please choose my bridge design. Brightwin Binyon, bridge design competition. You always gotta check these Jay Foreman videos for hidden jokes, cause they go by so fast. I've designed a swing bridge with two rotating roadways, so at any time, either one of these two paths will be open, and road traffic literally never has to wait. But every ship would literally always have to wait. Well, road traffic's more important. Not in the 19th century, it's not. Next! My yeah. idea is basically the same, uh, but the road slides out instead of spinning. It's much more complicated and probably isn't going to work. Oh, weird. Sorry. Good man. My design <laughs> is a transporter bridge lifting people and horses high up on dangly platforms. Like the one in Middlesbrough? Yeah. Uh. Oh. Uh. My solution is well, we make the bridge very tall. And how will vehicles get up there? Massive spiral ramps like the ones you get in car parks. That's hideous. You'll ruin the whole area. Well, that's that's what I do. Idea. I uh, totally ruined the embankment. So, start building on Monday, yes? No. <laughs> All right, well, how about this one? No. All right, how about this one? No. You don't seem to understand. That's I am good. Sir Joseph Baselcheck. But we're arch enemies. I built the sewers. I'm muting you. You have no authority. Gentlemen and gentlemen, thank you for your submissions. I have considered them all carefully and decided that the winner is me. Hooray! <laughs> Horace Jones picked his own entry and then died. Mm -hmm. His design was a bascule bridge with flippy bits that raised up to allow ships to pass underneath. Brilliant. It was a brilliantly simple and actually quite old-fashioned idea, but to build it on such a big scale would take some serious engineering expertise. So, Jones's design was improved upon by a proper engineer, John Wolf Barry, who got rid of the arches and what? added... John Wolf Barry. Okay, okay. Olivia Newton John. I don't know who the guy in the middle is. Someone named Wolf and some guy named Barry. Wish I knew who they were. Jones's design was improved upon by a proper engineer, John Wolf Barry, who got rid of the arches and added two walkways up top so pedestrians could cross without waiting. Genius. Smart. Despite its ultra modern engineering, the new bridge was designed to look a thousand years older than it really was, so that it would forever fit in sensitively with the surrounding architecture. Smart! matching the gothic <laughs> style of its next door neighbor, the Tower of London, which is how the bridge got its name, oh, okay. Tower Bridge. Okay. I thought it was because there's two towers on it, but it's because it's right next to the Tower of London and they wanted it to match. Makes sense. Great idea. Tower Bridge. Tower Bridge opened in 1894 and the public fell in love with it immediately. And who can blame them? I mean, look at it. The bridge <laughs> became an icon of London and is today arguably the most famous bridge in the world citation needed. It's so iconic that lots of tourists Wait, what was that? the most famous bridge in the world citation needed. Oh, there's a Lego set of the tower. That's cool. And then the wings cover. 
Or I don't know if that's wings. That's Paul McCartney. It's so iconic that lots of tourists, mostly Americans, mistakenly call it London Bridge. It's a compliment, really. It feels like it's been here forever, but it's actually so modern we have photos of its construction. It was built for cars. Wow. It's newer than the Brooklyn Bridge. Beautiful though it was, the bridge was by no means perfect. The That's newer kind of amazing to see. Bridge in the world citation needed. It's amazing to see that they used steel in it because it looks like it's just made of bricks. Wow. <laughs> Pardon me. Look at how these bits. That's amazing that it's not falling over. Wow. It was built for cars. That's so cool. It's newer than the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> so the Brooklyn Bridge is older than Tower Bridge. That seems weird, right? It's calling him a whippersnapper. Beautiful though it was, the bridge was by no means perfect. The foot crossing up top was never very popular. With such a long journey up the stairs, it was usually quicker and always less faff just to wait for the bridge to come yeah. down. It also had a reputation for pickpockets and muggers, giving criminals a scenic oh. backdrop for their seedy business. <laughs> so the pedestrian walk. He stole her old phone. So the pedestrian walkways were closed in 1910 and stayed closed right up until 1982 when they became part of the Tower Bridge experience. With Tower Bridge being such a beloved icon, it's incredible to think that this nearly happened to it. In 1943, famous painter W.F.C. Holden put forward a proposal to encase Tower Bridge in an Art Deco frame of steel and glass. That looks good, It would good, bring actually. the structure up to date and protect it from German bombs. Cover um... it in glass to protect it from bombs? Thankfully, no one at the time thought this was a good idea, and Tower Bridge has remained entirely unchanged. Almost. In 1977, the exterior was painted in patriotic red, white, and blue to celebrate the Queen's Silver Jubilee. It was meant to be a temporary job, but it actually looked kind of nice, so they kept it. It looks great. This means that Tower Bridge has the unique honour of being the only bridge in central London that's never been rebuilt. Every other bridge has been replaced and modernised at wow. some point in the last 200 years. As well as the structure being unchanged, remarkably, its status hasn't changed either. Tower Bridge still opens to let big boats through around 800 times a year, but it's still one of the most important road links in London, partly because it forms part of the inner ring road around the congestion charge zone, and partly because more than 120 years after it was built, it remains to this day the only bridge in Greater London east of London Bridge. Wow. Wait, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's the 2020s. Surely we've got better bridge building technology by now. Is there really no demand for any bridges in East London? And hasn't all the shipping gone away? In fact, why don't they just build loads of tunnels? Well, not that it's any of your business, Great but if question. you want to know the answer to these questions, tune in next time for another thrilling installment of Unfinished London. <laughs> yeah, I think I've reacted to that one. I don't remember when. Maybe I'll put a link if I remember to do it. Or where would it be? I don't know. I don't know. Well, great video. Another great video by Jay Foreman. It's been a while since I've seen one. It's kind of crazy. I thought the Tower Bridge was a lot older because of the way it looks. It looks medieval, right? Crazy. Let's pull up a map of London and look at that right. Where's that bridge? It's right over here, I guess. Right? Isn't there a train station? Satellite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This train station over here. I remember running across the Tower Bridge to get to the train station because the trains were stopping soon. Anyway, right. Great video, really informative, I learned stuff, I laughed, I cried a little bit. Anyway, thank y'all for watching this with me, and I'll see you next time. Later.